SAP reporting first quarter results uh, in the wee hours this morning. Uh, joining us to break down the numbers, Bill McDermott, uh, CEO of SAP. This is uh, a, a kind of a bounce back from recent quarters, Bill, um, that, that maybe were, were not quite as up to what uh, everyone was hoping for. This, this is a good start to the year. Is that the bottom line? Good start to the year. It's a, a beat and raise. What the capital markets have been waiting for, they've been getting all kinds of revenue growth. We're the fastest growing cloud company in the enterprise software space, but they wanted to see the multiples on the margin. And what we committed to today as we raised our full year guidance is we committed to improving the operating margins by one point per year for the next five years. So now after 75 billion investment in innovation for our customers, our shareholders are saying, wow, this is the moment I get the multiples on the margin and therefore the leverage in the share price. How do you, how do, you do it? What, what would you well, we do to improve margins? a couple things. One is our cloud gross margins can improve to 75% between now and 2023. We're hiring the absolute very best people in the world. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data, all the areas that our customers want us to go. So it's not the number of people it's getting the absolute very best people. And if you hire right, you manage your cloud gross margins right, and you have a highly inspired customer base where you're growing with high renewal rates, you get tremendous leverage so on the operating while margin. So you're restructuring and laying people off in other areas? What we're doing is when we did restructure, and that was announced in Q4, and we executed it in Q1, we basically said we're going to take about 4,400 people from areas that were not part of the new economy and higher to those tremendous standards. So we're bringing in the best data scientists in the world, best machine learning individuals out there, best enterprise application software coders around the world. And we're developing in China, in Israel, in the United States, in Europe. So the company really is on a roll. And you're as you're you not know, finished with the restructuring yet, Bill, right? I mean, are you right well, in the middle of it? Or we're, we're, we're almost done in the sense that okay. we accounted for most all of it, Joe, in Q1. And we are finishing it up in the next quarter. Right now, for example, it's being executed in Germany, but the majority of it has been handled. So the, the first quarter profit compared to first quarter last year was, was what? We're up, up, 19, down, 19, up 19%. Percent. Fourth quarter down 15%. One, in the fourth quarter. So this is a big, that's why the stock is like, wow. I, yeah. It, it's, yeah. There was some, there was some one-time charges in that, Q4 that, that, that impacted okay. that. But the stock today, we grew revenue, total revenue 16%, grew cloud 48%. And let me, do, you know, let me just put this on the line. When you grow cloud 48%, that's 80% <laughs> faster than Salesforce.com. That's 30% <laughs> faster than Workday. So when you have a franchise that's growing your core business in double digits, the cloud faster than anybody out there, and you're progressing the margin one point per year between now and 2023, I think that's why the shareholders have the stock up so 8%. Bill, so, Bill, this answers some critics that, that you were losing uh, the, the market share or, or customers and Oracle as well to competitors like the ones you met. You mentioned them specifically, so they're on your mind, I guess. Well, they, of course, all competition's on my mind, but what's really on my mind is where the customer needs us to go. We weren't losing to them. What the shareholders wanted, and we surveyed them. We had a capital market stay in New York. We used Qualtrics, the company we acquired, to survey them. They said, we love your revenue growth. We know you're gaining share. We just want more operating margin leverage out of the company. And that's what we gave them this quarter. It took us 10 years, Joe, 75 billion in R&D and M&A to get to the point now where we have everything we need. We don't need to do any more big M&A. We just need to perform well and spin off margin and free cash flow for our shareholders and the stock goes on a and run. And you're happy about Elliot. Elliot, $1.2 oh. billion. Uh, dollars. Euro. Uh, Euro, Euro, Euro is not. Could, yeah, not okay. yeah. could not be happier. To have a great firm like that endorse the stock and back management and our plan for operational excellence, that's fantastic. So the cloud business is where the strength is. Bookings, I think, were up 26 uh, percent. Should I be concerned that you lost your, your cloud president and you lost your chief technology officer within the last month? Not at all. The reality is change is part of growing and part of building a strong company. We have young development talent running our development organization now that is absolute best in class. 
the individuals that did leave, they had been with us for nearly three decades. And sometimes it's good for them and it's good for us. So they're two wonderful men. They're going to go out and do great things. I think the alumni leaving SAP, speaking well of our company, doing well in our ecosystem is a force multiplier for growth. So I'm happy for them, but I'm also happy for the young ones that are taking over now, driving change. When you, uh, you know, say you're going to have all this margin improvement and now it's kind of the time for shareholders to harvest, how do customers hear that in this world where every other cloud competitor is, is you know, yeah. feasting on them? It's a great question. How they hear it is they know we've given them so much innovation. It's like it's coming at them so fast that now they're saying, help me integrate it, help me fully leverage it across the enterprise and get the value from it. So interestingly, the customers and the shareholders are both in the same place. You've done unreal things. Now let's dig in and drive real value from all the things that you've done. Hey, you know, we bought an $8.3 billion company called Qualtrics. Mm -hmm. We now took over a new category called experience management, where we can actually tell the consumer experience inside or outside the company in real time. We have data now. So think about this. If you're running a company, you want to recruit to retire process in your company. How do my people feel when I recruit them? How do they feel when I train them? Am I coaching them? Am I teaching them? Am I giving them everything they need in their compensation plan? We know this all now in real time with the HANA database built into the human capital management process. So we do so, things that no other company can do. You wouldn't be crazy enough to forecast that you're going to double your stock in three and a half years. Oh, yes, I would. Let me tell you if you do, I did the rule of 72. That's like is that like 25% a year? Are, are you nuts? So, why, but, why don't you but, just work on Mark? You're, you're telling me where the stock's going to be? Yeah, but I, I, hey, Joe, let me tell you something. Let me put it this way. If we have a $40 billion enterprise application software company, $20 billion of that is in the cloud. If you take the median valuation for a cloud company, they get a 10x multiple. That's $200 billion in market cap. If I take my core business at $20 billion, so you can just times a five, there. Times a 5x okay. multiple, I get you another 100 billion, that's 300 billion. Well, we're going to have you back works. in 2023. You'll be around. Yo, so, you might works. be around. You've got to hit it, though, to be around. Otherwise, we might be talking to somebody. Anyway, hey, good, good luck. Good hey, luck. Hey, Joe, good. Yeah. winner's dream. You know that. <laughs> I know. All right. You're right. Very good.